coming up. Android's N-word poll sparks online jeers. Steaks and seafood to be removed from food stamps programs. Airy ditched Photoshop ads two years ago, and here's what happened next. 25 of the most shocking facts, and I'll put facts in quotes, to remind you just how bizarre America is. School principal says reading Harry Potter and Game of Thrones causes brain damage. No wonder my brain's a bit messed up. (laughs) Maybe the school principal needs to go read. I don't know. Giant (laughs) Overwatch action figures unveiled across the world. Saltwater Brewery creates edible six-pack rings. Beating studios to the punch, J.J. Abrams says Axanar suit will be, quote, going away. And more on this episode of Watts. Hey there, everyone, and thank you for joining us once again. This is the Wide Open Talk Show for Monday, May. Today is 23rd. Yes, tomorrow's the 24th, which means Overwatch. Anyway, <laughs> I'm Donovan Ed Kisson, and as always, as you can already see in here, I'm joined today by my co-host and good friend, Samuel Lewis. Hey, Sam, how, how was your weekend? I haven't really spoken to you since uh, Wednesday when we did the last episode of this show. Yeah, it's been one of those. My My weekend was good. Today... Not gonna lie, bit of a crappy day. So it's always good whenever you get to do your craft on a day like today. It makes the day a bit better when you get to do something like this. So definitely yeah, good. I understand that. We uh, we had to go to our largest client today and and start doing email setups because they're transitioning over from one domain to another, and uh, it's it's really the same domain except the previous domain had a hyphen between two words, and they finally were able to procure the domain without the hyphen and (laughs) i'm not the one who actually set up all the initial email accounts and it's a special office 365 going through GoDaddy kind of stuff and uh when you get there and you got about you know 30 30 or 40 email addresses that you got to go around and set up an outlook or people who don't use outlook and have decided uh they they would just prefer the web mail and they've been using one webmail now you got to show them how to use another and when you start off in the first four you do three of them doesn't work it's not a very good day but mm. <laughs> we got through it we 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 finally got on a roll and finally got to where we needed to be and it turned out to be a very productive day mm. so um anyway this is a call in show and that number is 229-518-3525 229-518-3525 uh, give us a call, you know, anytime during the show if you want to weigh in on any of the stories that we'll be talking about today. Uh, that would be most appreciative. So, I guess we should probably get started. Totally. All right. So, first up, oh, Google. <laughs> and actually, I, I'm not sure. Can this one really be blamed on Google? I'm not, I'm not really sure, but um, it seems last Wednesday... Well, I'll just I'll just read the article. It says uh, Google's Android ran afoul of social media users on Wednesday after encouraging people to nominate a word starting with the letter N for the latest version of its mobile operating platform. How could this possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> This is another case of Google being so engineering focused that they didn't think of the obvious social thing, which was sitting right in front of them. <laughs> I know. An Android website asked for submissions for, quote, any tasty ideas that start with the letter N for its new Android N operating platform, which was also unveiled at Google's IO Developers Conference last Wednesday. And of course, you can imagine the internet happened. Yeah. Um, you know, anywhere from just light ribbing of Google, please do not ask the internet to send you N words. Sent by at fart, I might add. (laughs) I know, who is a so-called DevOps thought leader. Um, what is a thought? I'm not, no, I'm not going there. That's, (laughs) that's a completely different conversation. (laughs) 
Uh, buzzwords. <laughs> yeah. Another one. Um, I think it's obvious how hashtag name Android in can go terribly wrong. Mm. Um, of course, then we've got hashtag Android nerds. This is the only obvious choice. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Gizmodo reported on Wednesday that the online anonymous message board 4chan was flooding the Android's name submission site with suggestions akin to an offensive epitaph of for black people, of course. Um, you lovable... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I misused the word lovable. You rapscallions, you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't hurt me, 4chan. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be doxxed. Anyway, <laughs> um, of course, now, there were some interesting ones. Social media users suggested nachos, Nutella... And nectarine. Those are two more than what I thought. Honestly, the one that comes to mind first is Nutella. Don't know what that says about me, considering I don't even eat Nutella, but I still I have never Nutella first. I have never tried Nutella. We've had it in the house, and I was like, nope. There are just some things that are a front against nature, and <laughs> Nutella happens to be one of them. So, okay. no thank you. I, I, think, I think my kids actually liked it, but... Yeah, no, mm. I, I was like, I'll just stick with the normal spreads, okay? So, you, you have your Nutella. I don't know, mm. I think nectarine would be a good Android nectarine. It does have a good ring to it, right? Yeah, yeah, I like it. So, um, Google. I thought I thought Nutter Butter, you know, I can't think of any dessert or yummy thing that isn't branded, though, is my problem. <laughs> okay, depending on... Depending on whatever issues we have with Android in, Nutter Butter might actually wind up being <laughs> apropos. Worse. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, goodness. Nutter Butter. <clears throat> uh, I don't know what Nikot means. It's in the chat. N-E-K-O-T. Do I really want... I'm, I'm scared to even look that up. I'm not going to. You can Sounds familiar. But... Look that up amongst yourselves, folks, if if you're so in. Oh, token spelled backwards. Oh. Token it's crackers also, cookie. Okay. It's also a coffee house in Brighton, United Kingdom. Oh, United Kingdom. Anyway. <laughs> All right. This is where I have to go. Oh, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> So I came across this article last week, and it was actually posted by one of the radio personalities, or DJs, I guess, from WTUG, which is a radio station in, uh, I'm presuming it's there in, in Missouri. I'm not sure. I didn't really, mm. that's not the point. The point is, right. the lady was actually covering another article from the Washington Post that was dealing with this particular lawmaker who has decided that he wants to put more limits on the foods that may be purchased through the government supplemental nutrition assistance program, also known as SNAP, also known as food stamps. Right. But here's where I have a problem with this. Um, and having been a recipient of food stamps uh, two times in the last four years. I've got some personal experience with these things. And not not saying that nobody else that's listening doesn't, but I'm just saying from my own personal right. experience, the things that we learned was the fact that this jackass right here wants to <laughs> try to get everything back to being more nutritious. However, um, he wants to cut out like steak. He's thinking mm. that if if you're on food stamps, and the entire point of food stamps is supposed to be temporary, which I don't disagree with. I mean, you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you are having to rely on food stamps for the rest of your life. Now, there are right. people out there that are in that situation. I have some family that are in that situation. But you would hope that you would be able to purchase nutritional food for your family. Well, there's a couple of different things wrong with that, and, and I've addressed this before. Mm. Nutritional food is expensive. Organic food, healthy foods, they're all expensive. And so 
grocery stores are engineered in such a way that when you go in, all of the the typical healthy foods are on the periphery of the grocery store. That's the reason why a lot of your your health food nuts, and I use nut not sarcastically, but I mean someone who's really into it. Will, a fanatic. Will, a fanatic, yeah. Will tell you you shop on the periphery of the grocery store because if you go down the main aisles, you're going to get all of the potato chips and all of the quick fix meals and all of the stuff that unfortunately – is what people wind up buying with their food stamps, and it's engineered. It seems to be engineered in such a way. So then we got this jackal coming in and saying, well, I just don't think people should be buying steak and lobster. (laughs) Well, number one, I'm pretty damn sure he's never been standing there and watched anybody buy lobster with food stamps. Number two, (laughs) you can go and you can buy uh, a pack of chuck steak, which I happen to like chuck steak. Chuck steak is not... The best cut of meat, it's not the worst cut of meat. It's kind of right in the middle. But I actually prefer it over like a T-bone or a sirloin or anything like that, especially because of the price. It's usually somewhere Mm -hmm. around 3 to $4 a pound. Yes, I agree. Meat prices are ridiculous, okay? They are just absolutely ridiculous. But you can take a steak and you you can actually utilize that steak and make healthy meals. Um, yeah. Steak is protein. I mean, does he not want people to buy hamburger meat? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. Yeah. Now, the interesting <laughs> thing about this guy is he, <laughs> this is the reason why, you know, I don't really give a crap what he thinks because he is an effing moron. He mm-hmm. is one of those that has made the statement about legitimate rape in the past. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, and of course he doesn't want anybody to remember, remember that. And um, and he wanted to clarify his his statements. Um, now it's Representative Rick Bratton, B R A T T I N, and he claims that his proposal is intended to quote to get the food stamp program back to its original intent, which is nutrition assistance, end quote, and not to get rid of canned tuna and fish sticks. He also went on to say that he's seen people purchasing filet mignon and crab legs with their EBT. I call BS on that, sir. And if he can't afford this, if he can't (laughs) afford those foods on his pay, he doesn't want people on the taxpayer's dime to afford those kinds of foods either. Sir, the Honorable (laughs) Representative Rick Bratton. If you can't afford filet mignon or crab legs on a representative salary, you need to get the hell out of government. <laughs> you you need to rethink your life choices because you have made some serious, serious mistakes. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> That's the... The steak and seafood is the thing where it breaks down a little bit. There are other things that are actually, you know, you get where he's coming from. Things like cookies, chips, energy drinks, which honestly shouldn't exist anyway, but I'm going to have people with pitchforks at me if I go any further. Um, Sodas. Yeah, soft drinks, too. I mean, all of these, you could get why they would be struck off of the list because they'll slowly kill you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no nice way to put it, right? But, they're, they're, you know, the, uh, like... they're the unhealthiest of the unhealthy. Exactly. But steaks and seafood, that's a bit, eh, no. No. I mean, seafood is brain food. How, how mm. much more nutrition, nutritious can you get than that? This guy is, is basically, he sees it as top tier, oh, well, we're going to the steakhouse. We're going to get us a $20 steak kind of scenario. And no, 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 no. I can take a pack of Chuck steak that's got like three or four in it, and I can make two meals with that. I can mm. cut that up and throw in some other ingredients and some peppers and what have you, uh, a bed of rice. We got a meal, you know, that, that two people can eat on generally for two meals. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the things that we do around here, um, especially now that I've started cooking a lot more, and I'm not saying my wife didn't do this because she did, but, and I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm starting to really enjoy it, but I'll make these bigger meals like for lunch. Yeah. And then I'll eat what I want. You know, maybe the kids want some of it. 
And then one of the kids will wind up finishing it off as a second or third meal. I mean, it depends on how much of it that we make. So, you know, right. we get our money's worth out of this type of stuff. This guy, <laughs> this is Donovan's opinion. You, sir, are an idiot. <laughs> Representative Rick Bratton of Missouri, you are an idiot. I think you should have, be impeached for stupidity. I have I have one message from him. One message alone. Hey! Hey! Shut up! <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. All right, you brought this one to the table, which I find a little ironic, but um, <laughs> considering what it, it... I guess not... I guess because what it does deal with, but what it not, is not really the primary focus of it. Anyway, I'll, I'll let you take the lead on this one. Okay. I'll, I'll just say there's some very nice photography here. <laughs> that's that's why I submitted the story, and you didn't get too far in the story. Um, um, so <laughs> so. So American Eagle has this brand. I, of course, didn't know it exists because I'm not the target audience for it. Um, but it's a brand called Aerie. Um, It's a lingerie brand from American Eagle, like I said. Um, but they decided to do something which is revolutionary, I think, in this day and age even. And and we've made fun of things like this before, not on – other versions of other shows that me and you have done have brought up this specific thing about how much things are photoshopped and things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, they decided to put their foot down and say, you know what? We're not doing photoshopped ads anymore. No more airbrushing, no more, no more any of these techniques that are frequent for especially lingerie ads and stuff like that to be doing. Um, so they, they even did a hashtag, of course, Airy Real. Um, but apparently, after they did this, their sales grew 20% in the 2015 fiscal year. And, and apparently, the boom keeps on going. It's, mm -hmm. it's not showing signs of stopping anytime soon. Um, and then, and then you, you've got further stats that apparently they rose 32% in the first quarter of fiscal 2016. So they're still going to this point. But it's it's someone finally saying, you know what? We've had this thing that women are these horrible blobs that are just – no, women are beautiful. This – it seems so obvious, right? Mm -hmm. or at least to me it seems obvious. It seems obvious to you. Um but uh, I don't know. We take so much, and this, and this is something that it it mainly appeals to the idea of women, right? Mm -hmm. But I would say they do this with guys too. A lot of the time, we've we've even had some hilarious examples of Justin Bieber in a pair of underwear and the six pack that they added to his chest when it was nowhere to be found. Um, <laughs> things like that. Yeah. But. So on both sides of the spectrum, the whole modeling as a whole, especially when it comes to bits of skin showing, has gone down this path where it's making people that aren't in that business feel self-conscious. And some people get sensitive about things like that. But in this case, I think it's well-founded that the modeling and stuff like that has almost gone a bit too far at this case to where – there's there's a reason why whenever I am near a female friend or something and they start calling themselves ugly, I try at least to shut them down in about five seconds. I'm like, no, 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 I'm sorry. Look at you. I know you have and you've overjudged it. The point is, look at you. <laughs> you are not you are not a Jeff Foxworthy did a bit about this back in the day pulling a one out of nowhere there he's he said the way that my wife describes herself she sounds like bearded goat woman from hell <laughs> he said, the way she describes herself i should chain her up in the garage and charge three bucks for people to look at her <laughs> 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 that is my wife <laughs> and no and they don't look that way you know and i think part of it is this whole modeling culture that has made the i mean there are these pictures on this article. These are not airbrushed. These are beautiful looking people. They mm -hmm. really are. And airbrushing is not needed. But for some stupid reason, 
all of these agencies and now are doing all of this fixing things. And I put fixing in very judgy quotes when I say fixing things. Uh, but it's it's good to see a company stand up and go, you know what? We're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to be full of crap. And as a lot of studies show and stuff like that, and this will show it, um, that with their results that they're having, it shows that consumers do reward companies for not being full of crap. Funny idea that, but I know, it's right? <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm I'm good on you for doing this, guys. It's fantastic. I'm I'm all for it. American Eagle, you you did a good job. I was gonna try to show some more of the pictures, but for whatever reason, I have refresh this page like five times. It's on HuffingtonPost.com. And of course, a lot of these are um, Instagram embeds and they won't come up. Mm. And all that I get is the little photo icon, except for the one at the bottom that I did show. And oh, she's got a cute little tummy. Anyway, um, <laughs> but you know, then again, so does my wife. So Wow, chicken, wow, wow. All right, so, but yeah, I agree. It's it's amazing when a company actually tries to do the right thing and says, you know what, our customer base, the people that we sell to, they're not morons. Okay, <laughs> the majority of them are not morons. Um, and so they will probably appreciate us being honest with them and say, look, these are real people. These are real women, no touch-ups. You know, warts and all, so to speak. Not that I saw a wart on any of them. But right. these, you know, it's not it's not a false expectation. Kind of like, and I hate to connect it to this, but kind of like boys, when they're brought up on pornography, mm. and they've got a certain set of expectations of the way sex actually is and should be, and... You know, whenever they get with that first woman and, and, you know, find out that not all women can do, you know, a, a, a triple jump and a quadruple twist <laughs> and land at the right spot on the bed. And, then you know, it's so, yeah, um, it's done for camera angles, kids. That's right. <laughs> it's yes. not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> As, yeah. Sam would know. Anyway, um, <laughs> I would thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, that's just a TMI. So anyway, <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm glad to see a company doing this and the fact that it is actually paying off because of mm. their continued growth. And if more companies would actually do this, um, if, you know, you want to increase your bottom line, this is this is what you do. Be honest with your customer base. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's nothing there that would look good on me. But I can't get off this bottom picture. Okay, Donovan, close the tab. All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, I know, I'm incorrigible. <laughs> okay, That's now. That's a nice word for it. <laughs> yes, yes. So, 25 of the most shocking facts, in quotes, to remind you just how bizarre America is. Now, I say in quotes because I did not validate these 25 claims. I did read through some of the comments that claim that, that actually say that some of these claims are dubious. So mm -hmm. take this with a grain of salt. Look at this as a tongue-in-cheek reminder of how bizarre America potentially could be if these things aren't accurate. And uh, we'll just you know, have a little bit of fun with it. Mm. So, we'll try to go through these quickly since there's 25 of them. The first one is the U.S. government poisoned alcohol during Prohibition in the 20s and 30s, effectively killing, killing over 10,000 people. I believe it. <laughs> the ice cream was overturned, I tell you. We weren't running any alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. All the ice cream parlors that sprang out. Oh, I know. <laughs> ice cream parlors, speakeasies. You know, that could have been a good time to be alive, but I would miss all of the amenities that I have today, so no thank you. 
Mm. All right, number two. Killing someone to prevent the theft of property is legal in Texas. Well, that's defense. <laughs> it's kind of what I'm thinking. <laughs> 100 acres of pizza are served in the United States every day. I've got to save some of the animated GIFs on this page, by the way. I know, right? <laughs> if you have $10 in your pocket and no debts, you are wealthier than 25% of Americans. <laughs> I believe wow. it. Yeah. 7% of Americans claim they never bathe. I've met a few of we them. We think that's we think that's what they said. We had to yell it to them from across the road. <laughs> True. Oh. One American consumes as many resources as 32 Kenyans. At first glance, I thought it said one American consumes 32 Kenyans. <laughs> 32 anyway, Kenyans. Uh, yeah. Nine million people are in prisons around the world, and a quarter of them are in the U.S. Hmm. Yeah. Hello, Fresh Prince. Yeah. There are at least 97 people called LOL in the U.S. <laughs> Why would you name your child that? Hey, law. Law. <laughs> Just for the laws. God. <laughs> LOL, LOL, LOL. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. It's completely legal for minors to smoke cigarettes in the U.S. and parts of Europe. What they can't do is purchase them. This is one <laughs> that was actually called into question. I'm not yeah. sure if that's valid or not. I mean, I know they can't purchase them. you got to be at least 17, I think, or 18. I can't remember I which. I think it's 18. Okay. And you still get carded until you're at least 40. I don't have to worry about it. I don't buy cigarettes. <laughs> Uh, in more than half of all U.S. states, the highest paid public employee in the state is a football coach. <laughs> that's it. That is, that's what's wrong. That's the reason why the guy from Missouri, the, the Honorable Representative Batten, <laughs> or whatever the hell his name is, can't afford his filet mignon or his lobster tails or whatever. He's not a football coach. <laughs> oh, I got it figured out, dude. Get out of government. Go be a coach. <laughs> and tell the quarterback that whenever he got sacked, that was just an example of legitimate rape. Oh, God. <laughs> Montana has three times as many cows as it does people. Yeah, it's probably a nicer place to live, too, because people suck. <laughs> the current flag of the U.S. was designed by a 17-year-old for a school project, and he received a B-. minus. Four planet Earths would be required to sustain the levels of consumption of just the United States. <laughs> That's scary. Yeah, a little bit. The American flag erected on the moon during the Apollo 11 landing was purchased at a local Sears store for $5.50. I call BS on this. There are no <laughs> Sears stores on the moon. <laughs> there are no Sears stores. It was probably a, 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 let's see, when that happened, did they have TG and Y's? <laughs> Maybe. Oh. By the time an average child leaves school in the U.S., he has seen 40,000 murders on TV. And nary hmm. a nipple. The <laughs> U.S. has 115,000 janitors, 83,000 bartenders, and 323,000 restaurant servers with bachelor degrees. Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Just yet another reason not to go to college. Go learn a skill. It's a scam. Cure, cue Justin Robert Young's mother yelling at him for saying it again. I know, I know. <laughs> I do. I do agree though that it we're better off. And this is, <clears throat> I like Mike Rowe. You know, Dirty Jobs, Mike Rowe. Mm -hmm. But uh, and he's he started these series of uh, short podcast calls called uh, "That's the Way I Heard It," which are oh, they're awesome. They are. Uh, they're little five to eight minute stories of things that you might not know. Like they told the story of Mel Brooks, how he started out as a military officer and all this other kind of stuff. Of course, his name wasn't Mel Brooks at the time. So <laughs> he gives you this build up and then it, there's a really good payoff. Well, of course, Mike Rowe has this thing called Mike, uh, Micro Works, you know, a play on his name. And it's all about 
There's like 5.5 million jobs available in America for skilled people like air conditioning and diesel and and gasoline engine repair and things like that. And so they give away scholarship money for you to go learn skill. Nice. So, yeah, don't go to college. Actually, go and learn a skill that you can either work for someone else and then own your own business. And then you're doing exactly what the American dream is all about, being an entrepreneur, being your own person. It's sticking it to the man. Anyway, no. (laughs) I I got a little off there. All right. Christmas was illegal in the U.S. until 1836, as it was considered an ancient pagan holiday. Guess what, folks? It still is. (laughs) It still is. (sighs) Yep. You dang Christians just hijacked my holiday. Anyway. <clears throat> See, I can say that to you because you know that I'm picking at you. Yeah. It costs the Meanwhile, U- when I find out I don't have a co-host in a week, I'll know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, are we doing the show? Nobody's heard from Donovan in four days. <laughs> mm. It costs the U.S. government $2 million. $768,902 per year to hold a single prisoner in Guantanamo. Wow. You know what? You could just give me half of that. I'll take a quarter of it. You know? Let them out. Let them out, and then if they do something stupid again, kill them. Quit incarcerating <laughs> them. Jeez. In the U.S., and Sam, you really need to quit doing this. Sitting on a sea turtle is a third degree felony. I think I, well, no, it wasn't a sea turtle, so that doesn't count. I, at a zoo, I think they let us do this. So it's, but it was a big, it was a ground turtle, not a sea turtle. So yeah, yeah I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, they just helped you commit a felony. <laughs> America has an official rock, paper, scissors league. Yes, finally. I can't get into real sports. I can't get into esports. This is my game. <laughs> <laughs> mm. GPS is owned and controlled by the U.S. government. It can be switched off at any time. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> it, was a, it was a military project to begin with. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. In 31 states of the United States, rapists can legally sue for child custody if the rape results in pregnancy, where in the actual realm of real life is does this make any damn sense? Yeah. I mean, <sighs> I don't know. Maybe 31 states think that there is such thing as legitimate rape. I don't know. Mm. Jeez. Sue for custody. I can't imagine that. I mean, my brain will just hurt. Never mind. Mm. A man in New Jersey went to the emergency room for an open cut on his finger and was charged almost $9,000 for a tetanus shot and a bandage. <sighs> Welcome to the American health care system. Nelson Mandela was not removed from the U.S. terror watch list until 2008. And finally, Valentine's Day is also National Condom Day in the U.S. (laughs) (laughs) Dun, dun, dun. (laughs) Wrap it up, people. Uh, Yep. Wrap that. Seriously. Seriously, some of you, we don't need any more of you. Wrap it up. (laughs) Yeah. Annoyingly enough, most of the people that we don't need are the ones that won't wrap it up. So, (laughs) that's... Yeah. They know how to fight back. Uh Mm-hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so we have the school principal, and apparently this is uh, across the pond. So you know, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll I'll give him a little bit uh, for being short sighted. <laughs> I mean, you know, we did win after all, but <laughs> he's he's claiming. I'm just going to read what he says here. This is this is uh, ridiculous. Quote, I want children to read literature that is conducive to their age and leave those mystical and frightening texts for when they can discern reality and when they have first learned to love beauty. Harry Potter, Lords of the Ring, Lords of the Ring, Lords of the Ring, (laughs) Lord of the Rings. I'll get it right in a minute. 
Game of Thrones. See, I was trying to mission mash all these together. Harry yeah. Potter, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, The Hunger Games, and this is what I love, and Terry Pratchett. <laughs> oh, heck no. <laughs> you did not. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> He's not even going to list off what Terry Pratchett writes. He's just going to say, and Terry Pratchett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, anyway. Screw and, this guy. I didn't realize that was the list. I didn't read the list. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Terry Pratchett, to mention only a few of the modern world's, quote, must-haves, contain deeply insensitive and addictive material, which I am certain encourages difficult behavior in children, Yet they can be bought without a special license and can damage the sensitive subconscious brains of young children, many of whom may be added to the current statistics of mentally ill young children. Okay. Okay. There, there's one exception in all of this list that I think young children should be reading, and you can guess which one, right? Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Okay, Game of Thrones. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure a really young kid should not be reading Game of Thrones, but otherwise. Well, as long as you're 12 or older, I think it's I mean, if you can wrap your head yeah. around the concepts, I'm mm -hmm. actually okay. And the other thing that we need to keep in mind here is oh, I don't know. How about a parent actually parent? Yeah. You know, if you want exactly. them to, if they can wrap their head around these concepts, and 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 granted, I'm not saying a seven or an eight or even a ten year old should probably be reading Game of Thrones, but then mm -hmm. again, I think the television show is probably a little bit more graphic than the books. But I've heard, yeah, yeah. I've heard they actually add more nudity than is yeah. actually in the books, which is like <laughs> HBO. Come on, you you don't have to have a weekly boob quota. You appear to, but you don't have to. You know, yeah. <laughs> I think there's a list. It's like quota. Yep, check that off. <laughs> but if a parent wants to encourage their children to, you know, to read and to learn, because it, it's like what this points out later in the article, fantasy actually helps develop a child's vocabulary. Plus, mm. it kind of allows them to think outside the box. Yeah. You know, instead of just, oh, well, we got to read like real world, you know, historical books and text and all like that. I mean, that's great. You need to know where you come from. You need to know how we got to where we are today. But imagination, imagination is about all of these things. So, I mean, and, and things like the, the things that Terry Pratchett wrote, rest in peace. But the things that I don't know why I've added that because I'm not about to say anything bad about him, but still, um, he's one of the great losses in literature. Um, the things that he's, I don't know if you've ever read any of the Discworld books and if you haven't, you really need to read them because they're fantastic. I, I haven't, but I've got an, another, a friend of mine that I used to work with at my previous job who also loves his book. So uh, eventually mm -hmm. I'm going to get into them. Yeah, because they're a lot like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You know how that series used uh, the science fiction just as a background for the comedy? Yeah. Uh, the Discworld books do the same thing. So people that really like fantasy and want a comedy set up, <laughs> read Discworld. You will not be disappointed because it even makes fun of some of the tropes that fantasy is really guilty for and goes, now wait a minute, if we actually put a magnifying glass on this, <laughs> this makes no sense. <laughs> I mean, this is a world where the wizards are highly incompetent and usually too busy trying to kill each other because the higher ranking you get in the wizards set up in Ockmore Park, the lower your life expectancy will be because they're more about politics than anything else. You know, things like that are what makes the Discworld books work, especially when you realize that you're sitting there reading it and then you go, oh my God, he's doing the Trojan horse scenario, but how it probably should have went if the Trojans weren't such idiots, <laughs> you know, things like that are, are inside that book series. They're hilarious. The things that they just pull off. Mm, yeah. I, I think I have actually read some, I'm trying to remember there was a, Oh God, a knight or an assassin. I think his name started with a G or something. I don't know. It was something my friend Rusty had actually said, look, you, you need to read this. And I started reading it, and 
<clears throat> I can't remember. Yeah, there's multiple jumping on points in Discworld too. They're not one story that goes on for the mm-hmm. entire time. Right. They're starting at one and you'll get through a couple and you'll get through one person's story and then it'll zip off to this one witch in the woods. It'll zip off to this other person. It'll zip off to this. So there's a bunch of different, they all just, there's like, there's like at least 30 Discworld books, but they're different stories in the same universe. So that's why they're numbered and everything. I got so. you. Cool. All right, so this guy is the headmaster at uh, the headmaster and founder of the Acorn School, which is an independent private school in Glouse, Gloucestershire. You, I, whatever you know, it's G L O U C E S T E R S H I R E. It's in the UK, mm-hmm. as we said. Right. So headmaster Whiting. So he thinks you should need a special license to buy fantasy series. I love this comment. Honestly, that seems like something Dolores Umbridge would say. <laughs> Correct. That is, yes, definitely. Ugh, I hate that woman. Anyway. <laughs> I know, right? Ugh. Ugh. Terrible, terrible. I mean, I'm I'm one of these people that I'm not a super fan. I can't list off everything about Harry Potter, but I know what my house is. Let's put it that way. I'm that deep, at least. <laughs> so, so, which house are you? Ravenclaw. Mm. I have no clue what I would be. Mm. Honestly, I, I do not know. I never There's got plenty that deep of into official it. quizzes you can take. So, yeah, but for I've, some reason, I've taken several, and they all give me Ravenclaw, and I've even ran it past someone that's way deeper than I am. And they're like, "Oh no, I see you being Ravenclaw." <laughs> Not as right. an insult, but still, <laughs> it was an insult. No, it wasn't. It was okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, "Wow." It's like, it's like the jerks that say Hufflepuffs are derpy when they really aren't. But anyway. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> All right, so he goes on to say that uh, he went off on irresponsible mothers who let their children corrupt their minds with these terrible books, saying, quote, Last week I saw a mother sitting on a bench in a shopping mall with her young baby sampling the milk from its bottle to make sure it was the right temperature and flowed freely. Will that same mother, in 13 years' time, when that baby becomes an opinionated young teenager, be able to offer the same care? Will the mother sample the literature that it reads like it did the baby's bottle? What is this guy even saying? I don't know. Please, people, if you have your children in this dude's school, yank them now. <laughs> you do not need to pay this idiot for him to try to teach your child anything because... I think he must have bought the the he bought the flag at the Sears on the moon. I'm serious. <laughs> God. And just so I don't get sued, in my opinion, this guy is an idiot. <clears throat> yeah. This is crazy. Hey, hey, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's move on to something a little more interesting. <laughs> Less idiotic. <laughs> yeah. So we got these giant Overwatch action figures that were unveiled across the world. Yeah. Man, that would have that would be so awesome to be just walking along and and suddenly uh, there's a tracer in a box, mm-hmm. like an yep. actual packaging. You know, full size. I mean, we're talking 15 feet tall. Mm. That's housed in action figure packaging. Really well made pinpoint action figure packaging too, right down to the annoying little plastic loops that they put over the accessories and the figure to hold yes. it in place. <laughs> yeah, and you press a button on the packaging and parts of the action figure light up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so sorry. My, I went to a really dark place whenever I saw this, especially on Tracer, and it's got a button that says, try me! <laughs> Uh, Oh, contraire. I really would. But, um, (laughs) yeah, she's not my favorite. I still like... So Tracer was in... uh, Where's Tracer? She's in San Francisco? Is that right? No, Hollywood Boulevard. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Right on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in front of the star belonging to Britney Spears. Wow. (laughs) Okay, so, yeah, Los Angeles, California, Paris, France, which is Genji, 
in mm -hmm. Busan, South Korea, which is Farah, but they haven't actually gotten a picture so far of her. Oh, there it is. They finally did. Yeah. Okay, the article got updated. Yeah. That's my character right there, just because I love rocket launchers. Blow them all up. Let God sort them out. <laughs> that coming from an atheist. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I got a rocket launcher. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Convictions? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Morality? Convictions? Ah, I call that weakness. <laughs> uh, I get rid of that with a cup of coffee every morning <laughs> and a big ass rocket but that's cool <laughs> that is yeah. cool uh, that they're doing that and like we said at the top of the show tomorrow is uh, I'm, I'm correct right the 24th is the official launch date of Overwatch mm -hmm. yeah yeah so get your game on have you I bought was actually it thinking it was today but I might be wrong. Um, but no, I have not bought it yet. I have I have a situation happening right now, which is making me go, mm, might want to keep onto my money a bit longer until this gets cleared up. So I completely understand. The game will, my, will be here. My fiscal year ended, so I had to reapply. Let's put it that way. Gotcha. Or that's what... That's how they explained it to me anyway, is that my year ended, so I had to reapply. I don't know. I, whatever. That's really strange. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Things work so much differently in Georgia. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, they work very differently in Kentucky, too. I just, yeah, and I'm not, not saying different doesn't mean better. I'm just saying it's different. Yeah. Mm. Here it's like, hey, you get X number of weeks, you're done. But, yeah. but but I need to eat. Nope, you're done. <laughs> you should have voted for the other candidate. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you watch John Oliver's thing from last night, you'll discover that, you know what? It really doesn't matter if you vote <laughs> or not. I am looking forward to watching that. I haven't yet, but I saw the topic and went, ooh, this ought to be good. <laughs> As much as I know about this stuff, and, and I'm not a guru by any means, but I thought I knew a fair amount, and I'm, I'm constantly learning. I learned more in that 14-minute video than I have in two years of studying the whole political process. Mm. And I was like, you know whenever you get a piece of information and it just changes your entire worldview and you're like, F it, I'm done. Yep. Well, that's pretty much what happened after I watched that video. <laughs> I'm like, it doesn't matter. I want Sanders in. I think he'd be a fantastic president. He's got a lot of ideals that 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 I track with, you know. You uh you know, universal health care and uh a, a minimum income and things like that. I mean, cuz you got to you got to keep pace with history. You got to keep pace with technology. But it's not going to freaking matter. Anyway, okay, so on to more important things like beer. Um, <laughs> this is actually a really neat story, and what uh, our producer actually shared the video, uh, so I went and actually found that there was an article about it. So we have this brewery down in Delray Beach, Florida called Saltwater Brewery. I've never tried their beer that I know of. It's mm. a craft beer company, which, of course, it should be. Because right. none, none of your major large corporations, you know, your Budweiser, I'm sorry, your Americas, um, <laughs> anyway, InBev and all of those, they're not going to do stuff like this. Environment, birds, turtles, who cares as long as everybody's getting drunk? But right. they have uh, one of the biggest issues that we have with marine life and very, you know, birds and, and, and other animals that are you know, along the beach and in the ocean and stuff like that, is the fact that humans are damn dirty creatures. <laughs> Pretty much. And we, we, we litter and we pollute the planet like no other creature on the planet does, and particularly whenever we learn to develop plastics. Now, I personally love plastic. I think plastic is a fantastic invention. Um, it has allowed us to create a lot of products that we couldn't otherwise create at the cost that we can create them. The side issue is the fact that, just like with this, when you get a six-pack, 
of drinks, <clears throat> cans generally. But you can also get these things in like the plastic bottles and what have you. You have these little plastic rings that hold the six packs together. And these things, you know, we strip them off, we throw them in the trash, they wind up in the landfills, they get out of the landfills, they wind up, birds eat them. Uh, there have been instances where uh, aquatic life like uh, sea turtles and what have you have, when they were small, they got them wrapped around their body. And of course, it's not like they got opposable thumbs to get the things off of them. Mm. So then as they start to grow, then the plastic starts tightening around them and then their body starts malforming and goes around it. I mean, it, it looks, it's really, really sad. And I've yeah. seen, I've seen pictures of birds where, you know, just, <clears throat> just, uh, laid out probably hundreds and hundreds of birds that were dead. And when they would cut them open, they would find these plastic pieces in them. Mm -hmm. So Saltwater Brewery decided, okay, we need to do something about this. They've created edible six-pack rings. Now, granted, yep. they're going to cost a little bit more, but they're hoping that people will, will uh, be appreciative and, you know, let's uh, protect the environment because these things are 100% biodegradable and uh, compostable, which, you know, what they're made out of is not necessarily going to be nutritious for marine life, but it won't hurt them either. Right. So um, the brand says that the innovative design is as resistant and efficient as plastic packaging. And of course, the only drawback is that the edible six pack rings are more expensive to produce. Peter yeah. Agerty, I guess, who is the head of, of brand at Saltwater Brewery, said it's a big investment for a small brewery created by fishermen, surfers, and people that love the sea. So they're hoping that more breweries will hop on this bandwagon and then prices can go down because, of course, you, the more you can produce, you can do it cheaper. So I, this is a fantastic idea yeah. to me. A it little is. a statistic, the Ocean Con Conservancy's 2015 Ocean Trash Index, which enlisted 561,895 volunteers to pick up 16,186,759 pounds of garbage. Wow. So they're offering a few staggering facts. It cites that plastic is a, uh, among the most common trash item ingested by sea turtles in 2015. Volunteers found 57 marine mammals, 440 fish, 22 sharks, skates, and stingrays entangled in plastic. Uh, the index also explains that litter littering isn't the sole culprit for the plastic in the ocean. Plastic can also be blown by the wind from a trash can or dump and end up mm. in a storm drain and then travel through pipes in the ocean. So, yeah, and there's a nice little video that they've got about, you know, showing the uh, the, the 6.3 billion gallons of beer, 50% in cans. Uh, most of the plastic rings end up in the ocean. So, yeah, good on them. I like it. I would be willing, I mean, if I was drinking their beer, which, like I said, I've never tried their beer. Um, don't know anything about them, but if it costs like an extra 50 cents per six pack for those edible biodegradable rings, I'd pay mm. it. Well, and <laughs> I may be telling tales out of school, but this is a craft beer company. Their audience is probably going to be the same type of audience that would be, oh, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, it's not it's not your typical guy going around drinking America. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, and crushing the can on his head when he's done. Oh yeah, right. Oh boy. All right. Final story. This is an update on the uh, Axonar suit. Mm. And I had actually seen this earlier, but not this particular article. Um, it took me by surprise whenever you shared it because you know the video thumbnail, and I'm like, what is what is Adam Savage doing there? <laughs> but yeah. um. Anyway, so this was at the, it was a Star Trek fan event mm -hmm. of some some sort. <clears throat> so, uh, and this was on Friday, and 
Director J.J. Abrams was in attendance, and so he indicated that the CBS and Paramount lawsuit would be dropped against Axanar Productions, which, mm-hmm. uh, of course, is a fan-led, cr- uh, crowd-funded production uh, company that's created to make production-quality Star Trek fan fiction. Uh, what they've done so far has been fantastic. It's a great storyline, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, so what they did, and of course, you know, Justin Lin is doing the current Star Trek Beyond movie. And Justin Lin is best known for his Fast and Furious movies. So it was always interesting to see how he was going to pull this off. And honestly, the new trailer of Star Trek Beyond that just came out, Mm -hmm. it rocks. So I haven't seen it yet. I've heard good things about it, though. The first trailer made a lot of people, you you were kind of left scratching your head going, what is this movie about? But this trailer clears it up, and it's it looks like it's just action-packed from the very beginning to the very end. So, yeah, some could quip that it's Fast and Furious in space. Okay, big <laughs> deal. I don't care. It looks good. So, apparently, Justin, J.J. Uh, Abrams got Justin Lin to go to the uh, executives at CBS and Paramount and, and say, hey, <laughs> this is not the way to treat your fans. <laughs> um, little quote here. It says, a few months back, there was a, let's see, I'll read this. A few months back, there was a fan movie, Axanar, that was getting made, and there was this lawsuit that happened between the studio and these fans, and Justin, and I'll tell the story because he probably wouldn't, he was sort of uh, outraged by this as a longtime fan. We started talking about it and realized this was not an appropriate way to deal with the fans. The fans should be celebrating this thing. Fans of Star Trek are all part of this world. So he went to the studio and pushed them to stop the lawsuits, and now, within the next few weeks, it will be announced this is going away and that fans would be able to work on their project. Now, interesting thing that the article noted was that the producer of the movie, I'm trying uh, Alec Peters, he's the executive producer, was in the audience, had not heard any of this until (laughs) J.J. Abrams said it on stage. Oh, that's a surprise for you. (laughs) I know. Sitting there, uh, enjoying this event, then suddenly you hear out of out of J.J. Abrams' mouth, this thing's going away. Now, there's an update at the bottom of the article. This is on Ars Technica that says, The original headline of this article said that Abrams revealed CBS and Paramount would drop the lawsuit against Axanar, but so far the companies have only confirmed that they are in settlement talks, so the article was updated accordingly. So that's good. I mean, I would prefer that they just drop it and walk away and say, "Okay, you know, we're going right. to we're we're going to get better press on this and probably more sales if we don't act like jackasses." And Funny that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, you know, do the right thing, be honest with your with your fan base, your customers or whatever, and they will love you for it until they don't mm-hmm. because well, you probably effed up somewhere along the line, <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, it, this was a ridiculous lawsuit to begin with. Yeah. And to me, it always kind of smelled of, wait a minute, you've got some non-professional people, and I say non-professional like non-studio people, that have yeah. put together a great story, have actually pulled in fans to act and produce and do camera work, and this thing could be potentially as good as anything we've ever produced sue the shit out of them we cannot allow this <laughs> <laughs> the main thing was things like the klingon language and stuff like that which is the only yeah. i guess shame this this was pointed out by i think it was veronica belmont that pointed this out on dtns today um but she pointed out that if this does go into a settlement it means that we won't get a ruling in terms of can you copyright a language yeah. or not uh, so that's the only thing we won't get a settlement into the terms of something like that, but still worth it in order to just have them leave them the heck alone. I agree. (laughs) I mean, I I don't believe that they should be, uh, languages should never be able to be copyrighted. Absolutely should not. Apparently Um, you are not able to copyright a system, which means that a language is under legal definition, a system. Yeah. Ergo, that goes more into patent territory, and then if it was to try to patent a language, there would be prior use of language. (laughs) Yeah. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? I'm going to patent English. (laughs) What kind of English? Yeah, what kind of English? (laughs) 
I'm going to patent this here broken English. I, I think I got it down pat. I tell you what. <laughs> oh, God. You say that, and suddenly I'm just, I'm, all I can hear in my head now is the liberal redneck. <laughs> oh. True. Yeah. I've, He's an interesting character I that's have, cropped up recently. <laughs> I have fallen in love with this guy. You yeah, well, you you don't really know whether he's totally faking it or if oh, he's just I do cranking it up. No, right? I, I know, you know, I know because he did an interview with Seth Andrews, the Thinking Atheist. Oh, okay, yeah, very very good interview. And Seth asked him, you know, are, are these the things that you act? This is the way you feel? And he's like, yeah. He said, you know, I'm I'm just I'm, I'm pissed. <laughs> now yeah. he is a comedian. Right, he is a comedian. He's a uh, he's got a website. It's he him and two other guys called Well Read Comedy, and, and the red is spelled R E D. <laughs> so, uh, okay. um, and they they they're actually booking shows like in Atlanta and other places. I'd love to go see him, but uh, yeah, he's uh, he's not he's not faking it. He's actually a redneck because he lives in Tennessee, and he's been yeah. a, he's been a liberal all of his life. Okay, and he's pretty I much didn't an know atheist. If he was- uh, I didn't know if he was throwing the accent on a bit thick was all I was meaning, you know, oh, well, like me and you will do sometimes, yeah. right? <laughs> I think I think the accent is a little bit thicker, but he's definitely Southern. <laughs> mm. I mean, in just his normal talking with Seth, yeah, you can you can tell, but he he lays it on thick, you know, kind of yeah. you know like Carl T. Ruck is thick. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> oh, so, but yeah, I like him. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up. Sam, what you got going on? Plug your stuff, man. Well, if you want to find all my other podcasts when I'm not hanging around here, you can go to tscn.tv to find all that. Um, if you want to support all of that stuff going on, you can go to tscn.tv slash support for my Patreon. And if you want to get a hold of me more personally, you can go to about.me slash labtech7 for all of those social media goodies. Very good, very good. And all my stuff is sitting over at slant.fm. Uh, we've redone the live page. So, of course, if you're watching us live right now, then you'll kind of see some of it. But um, my my uh, my son, Tyler, really just took the bull by the horn, so to speak, and redid that entire thing. He and I worked on some scripting one day, and by, the, by 2 o'clock the next morning, he had completely revamped, re- rewrote everything from the ground up. And did all kinds of things that I had not even, I mean, I knew they were possible, but I wasn't necessarily going to ask him to do it. He just did it. So, (laughs) you know, you drive up to that page and it's actually playing a playlist of all of these videos. And uh, it's smart enough to know when we go live and it's smart enough to know when we're no longer live. And it just starts right back at the appropriate time slot of the the playlist. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have to give diamondclub.tv credit because that's actually where i got the idea from so that and our producer because he Mm -hmm. was looking at it too and suggested it so you know big shout out to our producer and thank you for the idea um yeah so slant.fm and my social media stuff is over at about.me slash gd adkisson if you have any feedback the email address is feedback at slant.fm if you want to leave a voicemail that number is 313-718-2557 313-718-2557. Yes, it is different than the call-in number. So remember, we record this show live each Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. So have a very good Tuesday. We'll see you back here Wednesday at 6 p.m. Take care of yourselves. we we'll see you then. Bye-bye. is a production of the Slant FM Digital Network. Find more at slant.fm.